Dantix here, and it's been out for a while now, and we've had yet to get clarity on a few mechanics, especially those around keywords, item effects, damage values, melee combos, and more. What you really need to know to min max. To go through the game and test everything is a monumental task, which is escalated by the number of loading screens. Thankfully, Slash Kitsune Kinder and Slash Acidic Swords have taken the time to do so and made a helpful post with the help of the Algorithmic Freelancer Discord. Link in the description, be sure to check them out. In this video, we're gonna run through the aforementioned mechanics and really hammer in what you need to know. A preface though, all values were gotten at pilot level 30. So let's get started. The first tidbit is that there are five damage types, impact, acid, fire, ice, and electric. They sit in one of the two categories, physical and elemental. Fire, ice, and electric are elemental, whereas impact and acid are physical. It's surprising to know that acid is a physical damage type, so those stacking physical damage gear will benefit from acid attacks, and inversely, those stacking elemental damage gear will not get an increase to acid damage. Do know that impact damage is any physical attack that's not acid, even if it doesn't say it. What about blast though? You see it all the time in item effects. Well, blast can be any damage type. So for example, you could have a fire blast attack or even an acid blast attack. So you can have a physical attack that's either acid or impact and can optionally be blast and can optionally be melee. You can also have an elemental attack that's either fire, ice or electric and can optionally be blast and can optionally be melee. Confusing I know, but getting your head around this helps when you're min-maxing as you need to know which keywords to look for. Now let's go through, in more detail, damage types. Starting with electric, I've said in the past that electric damage is great at taking down shields, well it does 50% more damage to shields and 50% less to armor. So the scar heavies will shrug off your lightning, but scouts will be food. Electric primed enemies will zap those next to them for almost no damage, but the good thing about it is that they prime those targets. Use electric priming effects if you like spreading combos, however it does seem like the weakest out of all the priming effects. Now ice does 25% more damage to shields and 25% less to armor, and as you know it freezes the target. Note that ice and electric damage bleed over shields to the enemy's health pool. For example, if you hit a target with one HP remaining on the shield with an electric attack, the enemy will take 50% bonus damage to health. So don't feel shy using electric attacks even when their shields are low. Fire damage does 25% extra damage to armor and 25% less damage to shields. It also does around 13 ticks of damage every one second and that damage scales as max item level does. Acid does 50% extra damage to armor and 50% less to shields and as you know if you prime the target with an acid effect they take bonus damage. You might notice a broken blue shield icon. This may be on more abilities in the future but right now it's only on the ranger's pulse blast ability. Basically it does 50% bonus damage to shields and 50% less damage to armor just like the electric damage effect. The inverse is the little gold broken shield icon that you find on the Colossus Railgun and the Interceptor's Plasma Star. It means the ability does 50% bonus damage to armor and 50% less damage to shields, similar to acid. Let's talk a bit about enemy's armor. It's the yellow health bar that lets you know that they're armored. It seems to cut impact damage by 50%, but they can still be primed and detonated. Some enemies, we can't be sure of all, are classified as armored but don't have the yellow bar, like the scorpion workers which explode on you. Shields cut impact damage by 25% but also prevent all status effects applying to the target. However, what is interesting though is that they can still be detonated through shields. Shield targets also do not take bonus damage from weak point targeting. So in terms of stacking, you can stack Masterwork components with its epic version. The Masterwork version of the advanced circuitry component, for example, can be equipped with it. However, it isn't clear if they stack additively when it comes to their granting bonuses. In this case, extra melee damage might not stack additively, but it does seem to. Sigils stack as well, but you need to use different tiers. For example, you can't stack epic LMG damage sigils, which give 30% ammo and damage each for a total of 90%. Instead, you can stack an epic, rare, and uncommon for less. So rares and uncommons do not become obsolete after you get better versions. A major icon you need to understand is the cog wheel and suit symbol. 
If the cogwheel is on your item, it means that it only applies to the given weapon or gear piece, and the suit icon means that it applies to everything at all times passively. This is useful to know when trying to discover how exactly to get the most out of buffs, especially on weapons as most will only equip a secondary for its passive, so keep an eye out for the suit symbol. Let's now touch on melee. You won't be surprised to learn that the Ranger and Colossus aerial melee attacks do more damage. The Ranger's does 35% more and the Colossus aerial melee does 45% more. The Interceptor's also does more, 50% than the biggest melee hit that they do, but I'll go more into detail with that soon. The odd one out though is the Storm. It doesn't do any bonus damage from aerial melee attacks, surprisingly. The Colossus does lose damage when it comes to shield charge though, as it loses 55% when compared to its standard melee. However, Shield Bash does slightly more, they estimate around 18%. The Interceptor's melee needs a bit more of an explanation. First, that its combo is a string of five hits. It goes two small hits, one big hit, then two small hits again. The big hit does roughly 25% more damage than the others and seems to be the only attack that detonates combos. Aerial melee does about 50% more than that big hit. That's not all though, the Interceptor's melee has some other interesting and powerful bonuses. First, if you land clipping into an enemy when performing an aerial melee, you hit twice. And if you land, you can animation cancel into the bigger combo melee hit straight away for good burst damage. The Interceptor's melee also ignores enemy resistances, such as those granted by enemy armor and enemy shields, as well as going through damage block. Strangely though, while you're in your ultimate form, all melee damage is boosted except for your aerial attacks. Only grounded melee will grant the bonus damage, and this doesn't seem like it was intended. Just make sure to stay on your feet. Another tidbit of information is that you should always keep in mind that there are a lot of things that scale to the highest item level that you have equipped. So if you have a legendary at level 47, that will be what certain things scale to. And those things are melee damage, ultimate damage, damage over time effects like fire and electric, masterwork procs, and combo damage. So if you have a power of 10 white items and one power 20 epic, the aforementioned things will be powered up based on your epic item. Now let's touch on combos. We mentioned this before, but combo damage scales with your highest item level. The damage a combo does has nothing to do with the item that got the combo. So if you use seeking missiles to get a combo on a prime target, it will do a set amount of damage based on your item level, not based on the seeking missile damage. The Ranger does about 8,500 damage when proccing a combo with item level 47. The other three javelins do about 3,500 on their combos, but do have those extra effects. The Ranger getting more than double the damage for their combos really does push the notion that you should have a Ranger focused around detonating in your squad for those key targets. Though the testing found that plus combo damage on Ranger and Colossus components give twice as much as are listed. This clearly is not intended, but make use of it while it's not patched out, as other plus combo damage inscriptions give what is listed. In terms of masterwork items, all masterwork proc effects that deal damage scale based on the element that they are and the highest equipped item level. So if you have a masterwork gun that procs electric damage, you can increase it by getting a higher level item and getting plus electric damage. They do not scale based on the parent damage values. So in that case, if you get an increase to weapon damage, it will not increase the electric proc damage. Impact and blast effects also seem to scale twice as much as the value provided. Example, if the proc effect is impact damage and you have plus 10% impact damage on an inscription, you will get instead plus 20% on that item's proc. This doesn't seem like it was intentional, so get use out of it while you can. We mentioned before that shield targets can't be hit on their weak point for bonus damage. However, masterwork abilities that trigger on weak point hit still get the proc if you're hitting where the weak point should be on an enemy that has shields. So if you hit a Scar Scout's head through its shields, even though you won't get the bonus damage, your masterwork will proc. So that's it for now. Thank you again to Kitsune Kinder for the post and thanks to all that helped him. At the end, he makes it a point to tell Bioware that we need this kind of information listed, that we need some kind of character sheet or a way to compare damage numbers. And I've been calling for a test dummy section for a while now, but even having a way to simply compare is desperately needed. 
loading into the forge, loading out, then loading into free play, then loading out, then loading back into the forge is far too time consuming. I know you guys are listening. Thank you for that. But please, we do need it. But thank you everyone for watching. I've been taking a little bit of a break lately due to personal reasons and a little bit of burnout, but I'll be uploading more regularly again moving forward. Love you all and catch you all very soon with more videos.